Hey guys, Wade Willis here for Wade's Weeb Reviews. Starting today off with some great news from a certain scientific railgun. Uh, railgun T, it looks like it had 150 million streaming views. 150 million, which is the same for Railgun T as the first season of Railgun and Railgun S combined. So that's some pretty good news that this will possibly lead to maybe Index Season 4 or Railgun Season 4, maybe uh, another spinoff. So I'm super excited about it. And honestly, I believe like the reason for this is, is because this season was the best season so far, in my opinion. I, I loved it. Um, two different arcs. Uh, both were incredibly interesting. The pacing in this season was really good. They actually gave you time to breathe in certain points before going balls to the wall. So overall, amazing season. I'm hoping that we get uh, New Testament moved over into anime. That would be awesome, um, especially since I'm having a lot of trouble finding the New Testament light novels in English. So I'm, I'm a bit disappointed on that. I've been trying really hard. I think there might be something with licensing going on right now. Uh, but before I go into the finale episode uh, in depth, I want you guys to make sure you please like the video and subscribe to my channel. It helps a lot trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I'm super close. I'm a little over 900 right now. So every little bit counts. There's two main themes in this episode and uh, part of it is this arc as a whole. But uh, the first is the growth of Misaka as a character. And they show this in a few different ways in this episode and especially in this arc overall. And the second is the obvious homage to Frankenstein. Uh, and they do this with the doppelganger. I, I think it's incredibly interesting. Um, I, and if you guys haven't read Frankenstein, it's one of the best books of all time. You guys should definitely read it. And it's not copying Frankenstein, it just takes some concepts uh, from Frankenstein into this. And in Frankenstein, the uh, the character that everyone calls Frankenstein is actually called the creature. So uh, interesting, we have the creature in Frankenstein, the doppelganger in this. With the doppelganger, Kariba and the doppelganger were basically cut into pieces and made into two separate beings with mixes of each other. Very interesting, especially when you think of Frankenstein is basically a hodgepodge of different body parts uh, from different people. So I thought that's, that's one similarity. Also in this episode, the quotes from the doppelganger at times reminded me of uh, the some of the creatures quotes and things like that um, from Frankenstein. Doppelganger uh, says to Misaka at one point, I'm constantly reminded that I do not possess a soul. And at the, when she's talking about this, she's essentially asking Misaka for a mercy kill because Misaka misses on purpose. Misaka does not want to uh, kill the doppelganger. She wants the doppelganger to just assimilate into society as she is. Now, I think part of this is because with these scientific experiments, Misaka is kind of partial to these, uh, these people, especially when we think of her whole sister's arc and all of the clones that were created from her uh, that were a scientific experiment. And she sees all of them as people and I think that she does see the doppelganger as a human even though the doppelganger does not have a soul so that's really interesting and it shows uh, and that does kind of go into that Misaka has grown as a person a lot and the way that she perceives things is a lot more mature in this season and one quote from the doppelganger that really uh, hit me pretty hard was when the doppelganger was Misaka eventually destroys her and the doppelganger says like uh, this is no worse than disposing of a household appliance 
which is incredibly sad because the doppelganger, because she doesn't have a soul, just sees herself as parts. She's not a human. When when she possesses more human emotions and thoughts than other real humans in this show sometimes. Uh, and we see that she actually is compassionate. The reason she wanted to kill Kariba wasn't like just pure revenge. She wanted to kill her. She wanted to take down that whole plane with all the data because she didn't want herself to be recreated. A lot different and this totally redeemed the doppelganger for me. She was playing like a heel in the last few episodes and now we see oh she just didn't want herself to have to go through this or something else to go through what she went through and finds this like incredibly unethical and I have to agree with her which again this is going to tie back into Frankenstein again the end of Frankenstein at the end of Frankenstein which spoiler alert if you haven't read Frankenstein yet uh, and even if you know what happens I suggest reading it is it's a classic piece of literature but um, the creature is extremely distraught from Frankenstein his creator uh, dying and just he ha feels like he has no reason left to live and uh, tells this guy I believe he's the captain of the ship like you don't have to worry about me I'm gonna like go kill myself because like that way no one finds out that I existed and uh, kind of like just destroying the evidence of his creator's creation. So strikes a little bit of the same chord um, in this as the doppelganger who's trying to get rid of herself um, and all this these other things so that something like her is not created again. Kariba is eventually taken hostage by the uh, penis head haircut guy which might be one of my least favorite characters in the show he sucks he wants the soul to exist so much in the doppelganger and refuses to accept that yeah she was just controlling artificial muscle fibers will not accept it even though this is interesting to me as a scientist the uh, artificial muscle fibers and her being able to control those makes much more sense from a scientific point of view um, but he's wants to believe that the soul exists or that you can create a soul um, so bad that he refuses to accept the answer that is in front of him super interesting and more like how people from you think that people from the magic side of things would think but he wants his he wants the to be he wants his research to be correct and he's just focused on that which i do think does happen uh sometimes in scientists they they think they're right and they're gonna find they want their uh research to be correct or their theory to be correct that they're just gonna find every way to uh back that up even though that isn't really scientific theory you have to do your experiments and you're supposed to be led by the results, not by your feelings prior to the experiment. So with regard to the theme, uh, Kariba in this arc, I think, uh, I think one of her big purposes in this arc as a character is to show how Misaka has grown dramatically as a character. If we look back to the previous season, Misaka doesn't want other people really involved. She wants, she thinks it's her fault that the sisters were created and it's her, and it's her responsibility to fix this problem. She doesn't want anyone else to get hurt because of her mistake giving out her genetic code, which she was what, five or six years old and the scientists lied to her. I mean, I feel like she gets a pass even though it, it did end up being really bad. She realizes this herself because when she sees Kariba earlier on in the arc, uh, wanting to, telling people, hey, like, you don't need to do anything about this. Don't worry about it. I got it. It's my fault. She sees herself in Kariba and 
Misaka, even when she's towards the end of stuff with a uh, penis haircut guy, she's like calculating out, okay, the girl with the uh, eye skill and scavenger, and she's like putting that into the equation, um, and she's she's ready and willing to use other people to help her um, and work together with people. And we've seen this throughout this season, um, especially when she's like been teaming up with Misaki. Um, so she's grown a lot, and I I like her development as a character. She's this has been a good season for her for sure. Kariba is apparently accidentally shot by a penis haircut guy. I think he did it on accident. Kariba could have actually tried to do it. They try to make it, at least I took it as you're supposed to just see that she gets shot and not really know, but maybe I just, the two times I watched it, uh, I didn't really see uh, how I was supposed to see it. She gets shot in the stomach, but luckily for her, the doppelganger who's in pieces, the parts that are left of the doppelganger can be used uh, the organs that are left can be used to save Kariba and Kariba ends up getting saved and oh, it's kind of interesting I th again I haven't read for it in the manga or light novels but I have a feeling that the because uh, they showed that the doppelganger is actually talking to Kariba in her dreams now and is actually helping Kariba with like hey here are these things probably here's what's wrong in your science. Like I have a greater computing power. So like I'm able to figure all these things out and the doppelganger is essentially um, haunting Kariba's dreams by trying to help her with science <laughs> and stuff. Kind of interesting uh, for sure. Um, but I feel like this is something that we'll get touched on later on. Please don't give me spoilers, but if that is something, go ahead and comment below and be like, Hey, yep, you're correct. That is going to be touched on. Uh, but you guys have been really good about not giving spoilers and just telling me like what to kind of look out for, which I appreciate. After this, Misaka is hanging out with 10,032, uh, the one that always has the goggles on top of her head, who she got a des desserts for earlier on, I believe. Um, got her desserts again. And the sassiness of uh, 32 is quite funny because she tells Misaka, hey, like these, these are the <laughs> desserts that are a bit out of style now. I'll still eat them though. Um, then uh, they run into, they run into Congo and Misaka introduces uh, 10,032 to uh, Congo as her sister. To 32 uh, this is a big deal to her like you see that this means something special to her Her facial expressions change and um, Congo ends up calling her, I believe Ichi Ichi Chan or something like that so she doesn't have to say 10,032 like I've been annoyed saying uh, <laughs> right now so again I, I I think that's the first time Misaka has cons uh, referred to one of the sisters as a sister i think she's called them like a cousin or something like that in the past so if i'm wrong let me know in the comments but i'm fairly certain at least in the anime that she hasn't been uh she hasn't referred to them to someone who doesn't know about what's going on uh as a sister yeah the episode was titled my dear friends and they end the episode with her hanging out with her friends and uh, Misaki coming in, meeting up with her and just being extra as hell like she always is. And I loved it. And it seems to me like Misaki is going to be kind of in the friend group to a certain extent. I know someone's uh, in one of my earlier videos said that this isn't the last time Misaki and Misaka team up, which is awesome. I think they're gonna end up working together a lot more, but it seems like they're shifting it towards uh, them becoming a lot more chummy <laughs> in the future. So I loved this season. Um, I know a lot of people like the source material for Index a lot better. And again, I'm 
trying to read those light novels when I can get access to New Testament in English. So I will get to that. I'm going to be doing a video on how great this index accelerator uh, railgun Toaru uh, series is and I'm trying to get people hyped up for this because I we do need more of these anime and uh, I know people don't like how JC staff is implemented um, index I don't know if index season three is necessarily their fault it felt like it was very rushed and they might have just wanted to get to New Testament I'm hoping that was the reasoning because they really took their time and did a extremely good job with season three of Railgun and they've always done a good job with Railgun but this really stuck out to me a lot. I thought they did a really good job implementing the story into this and made it really exciting but I love to know what you guys think. Um, do you think they're going to end up doing more seasons? I honestly feel like the success with um, the success with Railgun T I mean the same as season one and two combined for viewings. Pretty big deal, I think. So, but yeah, guys, comment your opinions below. I'd love to know what you guys think. Hey guys, this is Wade Willis. Thanks for watching my video. Here's two other videos I think you might like, and don't forget to subscribe to my page.